So we just did a couple of videos where we looked at sequences of real numbers and the careful epsilon n definition of the limit of a sequence. Here we want to start looking at infinite series. So let's look at a quick definition. So let's say that a n for n equal 1 to infinity is a sequence of numbers. Then an infinite series is an expression of the form like this. So this is the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of a sub n. In other words, we're adding up all of the elements of this sequence. So obviously this sum may not exist sometimes. It might be infinite, so we need to control for that. And we can do that by something called the partial sums. So we want to define a companion sequence called the sequence of partial sums. So we'll call those S sub capital N, and that's the sum as N goes from one to capital N of A sub N. In other words, it's the sum of the first capital N terms. So we've got A1 plus A2 all the way up to A capital N. And now next, we say that our infinite series converges to S if the limit of the sequence of partial sums converges to S. Okay, great. So I want to look at two examples. One of a series that we will show converges, although we will not find the sum, and another of a series that diverges. So our first example will be the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. Great. And so we're going to show that this converges by the monotone sequence theorem. So let's go ahead and write that down real quick. So we'll show it converges by the monotone sequence theorem. And so what that means is we need to show that it's increasing or decreasing, but this one's gonna kinda obviously be increasing, or the sequence of partial sums will, and we wanna show that it's bounded above. So the first thing that we'll do in order to use the monotone sequence theorem is to show that the sequence of partial sums is a monotone sequence, and we'll show that it's increasing. So let's go ahead and uh, set S sub M equal to this sum as N goes from one to M of one over N squared. So in other words, that's our sequence of partial sums. And this is what I wanna show converges by the monotone sequence theorem. So let's go ahead and start by, like I said before, showing that this is an increasing sequence of numbers. And we can do that by looking at the difference of SM plus one with SM and seeing what simplification we can do. So notice that's gonna be equal to one plus one over two squared plus one over m squared plus one over m plus one squared, and then minus one plus all the way up to one over m squared. Great, but now tons of stuff cancels here. Notice everything at the beginning of this cancels with everything right there. And so we end up with this difference is equal to one over m plus one quantity squared, but that number is always positive. But what that tells us is that sm plus one minus sm is always positive, which is equivalent to saying that sm plus one is bigger than sm. So in other words, we've shown that this is an increasing sequence or a monotone increasing sequence. So now let's show that the sequence of partial sums is bounded. <clears throat> and you might wanna play around with some numbers, maybe like calculate this for m equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, to get a guess for what it should be bounded by. But what we'll show that it's bounded by is two, because that's maybe the easiest to work with. So just to reiterate what I mean here, what we do, what we wanna show is that sm is less than two for all natural numbers m. And I wanna point out that we only need to show that it's bounded above because we just showed that this was increasing, so it's automatically bounded below by the very first term. Okay, great. So now I wanna do this just by playing around with the nth term. And so this is the sum n equals one to m of one over n squared. So I'm gonna change this one over n squared to make it a little bit larger, we're gonna show that that thing that's a little bit larger also is bounded, thus making this S sub M bounded. And how I'm gonna make it a little bit larger is I'm going to exchange N for one over N times N minus one. 
But notice that gives us a problem at n equals one because we'd get zero in the denominator. So I'll start my sum at two and then I'll add the first term back in. Okay, good. So now what I wanna do is use partial fractions decomposition to pull this apart into two pieces that are a little bit easier to work with. So I'll let you guys check the details of this. It's a nice review from calculus two though. So this gives us one plus, now we have this sum n equals two to m of one over n minus one minus one over n. So it's not too hard to check that that's what you get. So I'm gonna write out a couple of terms from this sum to see how it goes, and then we'll also kind of check it more carefully. So maybe we'll do it ad hoc over there on the right and then check it carefully on the left. So notice that this is the same thing as one plus, and now my next thing is gonna be one minus a half, and then my term after that is gonna be a half minus a third, and then my term after that is gonna be a third minus a fourth, all the way up to my last term is one over m minus one minus one over n. Great. But now notice that this thing telescopes, the half cancels with the half, the third is gonna cancel with the third, the quarter cancels with something next, everything cancels except for that one over m minus one. But now this is equal to one plus one minus one over n, so that is two minus one over n, but that's most definitely less than two because we're subtracting just a tiny bit from two. Okay, so, so that's maybe a real quick way to do it. Another way to do it is to take this thing and break it into two sums. So I'm gonna rewrite this guy as the sum n equals two to capital M of one over n minus one minus the sum as n goes from two to m of one over n. Next, I wanna re-index these things so that they look the same so that I can combine them. So I'll do that by re-indexing this guy into this guy. In other words, I'm going to take n from this sum and replace it with n plus one. That's gonna give me a one over n. So let's see what that does. So now I've got one plus the sum, so let's see where we start now. So if n plus one is equal to two, then n is equal to one. So that means I go from n equals one to m minus one of one over n minus the sum as n goes from two to m of one over n. Good. The next thing that we wanna notice is that almost everything from this sum cancels that sum. In fact, the only thing that survives from this first sum is the n equal one term. And the only thing that survives from this last sum is the n equals m term. So that means this turns out to be one plus one minus one over m, but that's most definitely less than two. I think that's a little bit more careful of a way to do it than that over there. And I noticed we have a little typo over here. This should be one over m and this should be over m as well. Okay, so let's see what we have. We just showed that the sequence of partial sums was increasing and bounded above by two. And so that means by the monotone sequence theorem, we know that this sum converges. And like I said, what we really did was showed that the monotone sequence theorem implied that the sequence of partial sums converge, but that's what we're saying means that the series converges. Okay, I'll clean this up and we'll look at an example of a divergent series. So we just got done proving that the sum of the reciprocal of the squares formed a convergent sequence, and we did it very carefully using the monotone sequence theorem on the sequence of partial sums. Now we wanna look at an example of a divergent series, and that'll be the harmonic series. So this is the sum n equals one to infinity of one over n. So I'm gonna define the sequence of partial sums like I did before, so I'll call it S sub m which is the sum n goes from one to m of one over n. And the way that we'll show that this thing diverges is by showing that it's unbounded. And recall that every convergent sequence must be bounded. So by the contrapositive of that statement, if we have an unbounded sequence, it must diverge. The general trick here is not to look at the nth term of this sequence, but instead to look at some power of two term of the sequence. In other words, Let's consider this term right here given by s sub two to the k, where k is some natural number. So notice that is exactly equal to one plus a half plus a third plus a quarter 
plus a fifth, plus a sixth, plus a seventh, plus an eighth, plus all the way up to um, one over two to the K. Okay, so the trick here is we're gonna group certain terms together and make some replacements. So I'm gonna group one third and one fourth together, one fifth all the way up to one eighth together, and then after that, one ninth all the way up to one sixteenth will be grouped together. And then finally at the very end, one over two to the K minus one plus one, all the way up to one over two to the K will be grouped together. Good, but now we're gonna make some replacements in a way that makes this term smaller. And the thing that we're gonna do is replace one third with one fourth here. And we do that because one fourth plus one fourth is a half. And then here we're gonna replace one fifth, one sixth, and one seventh all with one eighth. And we do that so that that whole grouping also adds up to a half. And then everything in here is going to give you re get replaced with 1 16th, but now that grouping adds up to 1 half. And then everything down here is gonna get replaced with 1 over 2 to the K, but that grouping is also going to add up to 1 half. But now the 2 k term of this sequence of partial sums is going to be bigger than 1, and then everything after the replacements over here. So here we've got uh, 1 half here, built off of the two to the one in the denominator. Here we've got a one half grouped together here, built out of the one over two to the two. We've got a one half here built out of the terms leading up to one over two to the three, and so on and so forth. So in total, we have k copies of one half. So that means we can replace this with k over two. So let's see what we have. We have s sub two to the k is bigger than one over k over two, but this guy right here is unbounded. So that's definitely an unbounded sequence. We can make that as large as we want. But what that tells us is that S sub 2K is unbounded and thus S sub M is unbounded. But unbounded sequences cannot converge. So what that tells us is that this harmonic series diverges. Good, and that's a good place to stop.